This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. Russia celebrates its victory over the Nazis in World War II with a military parade. Air traveler patients were as thin as customer dissatisfaction grows. Late night host Jimmy Kimmel responds to the haters one week after his speech on the country's healthcare system. Hello and welcome to Matador News. I'm Gianella Giglino. And I'm Tiffany Martinez. Graduation is nearly a week away, making finals week crunch time. Students, faculty, and staff share with us how they are preparing for commencement. Reporter Erin Lanuza tells us more. Thank you, Janella. For almost 12,000 students, CSUN's seven graduate ceremonies will be a major landmark in their educational careers. It may just look like a bunch of metal support beams and other components, but construction will be done before the university's honors convocation next week. And graduating students are not finals. Are, uh, graduation students are not finals. Are a major component of, for all students, which means grades are still a priority. Graduating students Samantha Etlin said she's not thinking about graduation yet. My mind is like a giant to-do list, and when I'm done with everything, I have my bachelor's degree. So all I, I'm not even thinking about it in days. I'm thinking of it in like two more papers, one more midterm, two more presentations. And then I'm done. <laughs> All along the university pathways, CSUN has posted signs to remind students to stay strong. It's another sign for graduation student Leo Madrano to remember as he finishes up his, his time um, at CSUN. Sort of getting my last feel for what it's like to be a student, um, at least um, in these first four years. And so I'm really excited. Adjunct communication professor Brian Dolberg said the next step for students will be a challenging one. So they have to keep in, re keep in mind to keep what they had learned here and stay strong. Now back to you, Tiffany, in the newsroom. More than 10,000 Russian troops that's, that's marched through Red mm. Square in Moscow for Victory Day. The annual event Thank is you. a celebration that's, of the Soviet Union's uh, victory over Nazi Germany in World War II. Hundreds of pieces of equipment was put on display, including missile defense systems. Russia is the third largest military spender. In 2016, the country spent about $70 billion in, mil in its military. 18 members of a fraternity at Penn State have been charged with involuntary manslaughter. College sophomore Timothy Piazza died of a ruptured spleen and severe injuries to his head three months ago. Police say he was drinking alcohol, passed out, fell, and hit his head. His fraternity brothers then punched him in the abdomen several times. Fraternity member Cordell Davis spoke to ABC News about why they waited till the next day to call 911. I was like, Tim needs help right now. Like, we should call 911 right now. They said, no, you're overreacting. And I said, no, I really do know what I'm talking about. He could have a concussion. Eight fraternity members are set to be arraigned today. The Pentagon creates a proposal to increase the number of U.S. troops staying in Afghanistan to continue the fight against the t Taliban. More than 20,000 American troops are currently in Afghanistan fighting against religious extremists. 5,000 forces from NATO countries are also assisting with the mission. The proposal includes sending 1,000 to 3,000 more U.S. troops. President Trump will make his decision at the oncoming NATO meeting later this month. Fort Lauderdale's airport was the site of fighting and screaming as Spirit Airline passengers became angry after their flight was canceled. Spirit has canceled 300 flights across the country in the last week because of labor disputes with the pilots, and these travelers have had enough. Passengers stormed off the plane when they heard the flight was canceled and started fighting employees at the ticket counter where travelers were waiting in line. Police had no option but to get involved. Three passengers were taken into custody following the incident. Liberal candidate Moon Jae-in has won the South Korea presidential election. Moon won by a huge lead in the race to replace President Park Joon-hae. Moon, a liberal who favors a more open policy towards talks with North Korea, said he will be a president for the people. The election came after Park, the country's first female president, was impeached following a business corruption scandal. 
This week, the Olympics Committee Evaluation Commission will be in LA to decide whether the city will host the Olympic and Paralympic Games. LA 2024 has released design models for proposed venues. UCLA's existing facilities are being considered as a village, a soccer stadium would be at the Rose Bowl, a gymnastics complex would be at the Forum, and biking trail at Frank G. Bonelli Park in San Dimas. The opening and closing ceremonies would be held at the Rams Stadium. Paris is also in the running to host the 2024 games and after the IOC's LA tour they will be there they will be there the committees will release its reports in July and the final decision is expected on September 20 on September 13th Mexico was the second deadliest country last year but it was barely covered in the US media the International Institute for Strategic Studies says Mexico's drug wars took 23,000 lives in 2016, coming in second after Syria's civil war, which took 50,000 lives. The war in Iraq and Afghanistan claimed between 16,000 and 17,000 lives, but still received more coverage than the events in Mexico. Media experts say one reason for the lack of media coverage in Mexico is that it doesn't involve a political agenda and it is an extremely dangerous place for reporters. Montreal declares a state of emergency as flooding continues. The mayor of the city says the flooding from heavy rains and melting snow have broke three le levees. Nearly 1,900 homes have been flooded across the province of Quebec. Three people are missing and one man is dead. About 1,200 troops have been deployed to help people evacuate. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has signed a bill to ban sanctuary cities. The bill establishes criminal and civil penalties for local government and law enforcement that did not comply with this law. The bill also allows police officers to ask crime victims and witnesses their nationality and immigration status. The, several, the American Civil Liberties Union of Texas says the bill encourages racial profiling by untrained immigration agents and could remove democratically elected representatives from office should from office should they fail to comply. The law goes into effect September 1st, but the American Civil Liberties Union vows to fight it in court. Mayor Garcetti has revisited the idea of building a gondola to bring people to the Hollywood sign. Garcetti hopes to improve the congestion along the hillside streets by transporting visitors from the Universal City area to the sign. The Hollywood Chamber of Commerce says this idea isn't new. It has been an, op an option for the past two decades, but there is no formal proposal for the gondola. The idea would have to go through extensive external studies and would need not provide a solution for those who want to walk to the sign. A spokesman for Garcetti says the mayor is opening to exploring ideas and ease congestion and encourage creativity. Graffiti, graffiti, oh, graffiti threats may have had something to do with a fire at an auto body shop in South Los Angeles. Firefighters responded the, to the fire this morning. It had destroyed three cars and was spreading on two more. They later found red graffiti that on the walls that read, I will kill you and another that read, I will kill your family, Richard. The owner of the auto body shop, who is named Richard, says he has no idea who would have caused all this trouble. The Los Angeles Fire Department is looking for evidence and is waiting for any video footage to bring justice. La Late night host Jimmy Kimmel responds to backlash a week after opening about his son's heart condition and criticizing the Republicans' proposed health care. Kimmel got a little sarcastic last night I'd like to apologize for saying that children in America should have health care. It was insensitive. Uh, it was offensive, and I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy appeared on last night's show and discussed the new health care plan. Kimmel thanked fans for the support. The hit Netflix show 13 Reasons Why will be returning for a second season. It has been the most tweeted show in 2017. 13, 13 Reasons Why is based on 2007 best-selling novel by Jay Asher about a high school student who dies of suicide and leaves 13 tapes explaining why she decided to end her life. The show will debut on Netflix in 2018, but the question now is, is Hannah's Baker's story over? American Idol is back and with a new home. ABC confirmed this morning they would bring back the reality competition next season. The show first debuted in 2002 and dominated ratings with Fox. 
After 15 seasons, the final show aired last April. The show has discovered many artists like Carrie Underwood, Kelly Clarkson, Jordan Sparks, and many more. ABC has not yet found a host for, or judges for the new season. It may be a little cloudy, but summer is right around the corner. Matador News reporter Kaylee Kilani is in the, is in the news, newsroom with more on the story. Thanks, Emmeline. As the days get hotter, many CSUN students are looking forward to staying cool in the movie theater. Blockbusters like The Fifth Pirates of the Caribbean, The Fourth Mummy, and The Fifth Transformers are all expected to hit the silver screen this summer. Baby Matador Bryce says his spidey senses tingled, this, tingled for the upcoming Spider-Man movie. He shoots webs and he can stick to and he can stick to walls. He was not the only matador ready for the summer flicks. Student Samantha Novello says she is channeling her inner kid too. Um, I know Cars 3 is supposed to come out soon and I was really excited to see that. <laughs> the excitement is mutual, Samantha. Disney Pixar's sequel Cars 3 is set to release June 16th. Lastly, a pro tip. If you're trying to save a couple bucks this summer, make sure to take advantage of student discounts at places like AMC and Cinemark. Now let's go back to Max going with sports. The Dodgers won big last night against the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates come to LA for the first of a three game series. The Dodgers started off strong in the first inning scoring six runs courtesy of Chris Taylor and Yasiel Puig en route to a 12-1 win. Taylor finished three for four with a grand slam and a walk while Puig finished two for four and added his 19th RBI with his solo home run. The star of the show, however, was starting pitcher Alex Wood, as the right-hander improved to 3-0 while striking out 11 batters in only five innings of work. The Dodgers are back in action tonight as Julio Urias takes them out against Ivan Nova. The Washington Capitals look to force a Game 7 against the Pittsburgh Penguins, as the two biggest names in hockey, Alexander Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby, face off against each other in another physical game. The only good news for the Penguins is the return of Sidney Crosby. After missing Game 4 and 5 with a head injury, the league's leading goal scorer was roughed up all night as the Capitals seemed to go after Crosby relentlessly. At one point, Crosby fell hard into the boards, head first, leaving Penguins fans breathless. That physicality seemed to boost the Capitals as they scored early and often. TJ Oshie scored first on the power play, but the spotlight was on Andre Burakovsky as he scored two beautiful goals, one in the first period and one in the third to make it five to nothing. Another up and rush. Burakovsky moving up with Oshi. Burakovsky holds. Score! And it's five. The Capitals won the game 5-2 and are scheduled to play tomorrow for game seven. These two teams will face off along with the Edmonton Oilers and the Anaheim Ducks as they play for the final spot in the Western Conference Finals. Now let's go to Emlyn with more in the latest in business. Coach is buying its rival, Kate Spade. The $2.4 billion deal will bring together the, the two New York-based purse manufacturers. Coach was recently able to increase sales after years of stalling profits. They did this by adding more stores abroad and reducing the number of discounts offered. Kate Spade will remain its own brand, its, its own separate brand, but Coach says the company will stop offering so many discounts. Many took to social media to express their disapproval of the deal. Despite this, shares of both companies increased after their deal's announcement. Amazon has made it easier for non-Prime members to get free shipping. Online price tracker Best Black, Black Friday says the online retailer lowered its minimum price requirements for free ship, shipping to $25 on eligible items. Earlier in the year, Amazon had dropped their minimum order amount from $49 to $35. Amazon has not formally announced the latest price changes, but the, the company usually keeps quiet when they adjust shipping charges. This is the second time in three months that Amazon has lowered their free shipping requirement. Retail experts say the price change is to compete with Walmart. SeaWorld says attendance at its theme park is down. The company profits dropped during this year's first quarter after attendance fell almost 15 percent. The company said the dip was caused by the change in the Easter holiday. SeaWorld also explained its San Diego's park's attendance dropped because they have not launched the Orca 
encounter experience. The new educational show is replacing the entertainment focus orca show. The show stopped after the documentary Blackfish led to public outcry over treatment of the whales. Let's go back to Mac to the latest in health. The length of your life may depend on where you live. Researchers at the University of Washington have found that life expectancies vary more than they expected across different parts of the country. The Institute of Health Metrics discovered the disparity of 20 years between the, the counties, with the longest and the shortest life expectancies. The results do follow a pattern. Communities like Marin County, California, that have a higher income, whose residents tend to be more educated, seem to have longer lifespans. Poor places like Ogala, Lakota County in South Dakota, which includes the Pine Ridge Reservation, have shorter life expectancies. The disparity is equal to those found between developing and high-income countries. A new study from the Pew Research Center shows that the number of people over 50 who live with an unmarried partner has jumped 75% in the last 10 years. This statistic can be linked to the fact that divorce rates are on a, are on a steady increase. Some, cu some couples that cohabit with each other claim that the way of life is easier because they both have separate lives, but then also have a life they share together. On the downside, a report from Bowling Green State also stated that people who live together without marriage have less frequent contact with their children than married partners. Now let's go back to Gianella with weather. Get your sunglasses ready for Friday and Saturday because it's going to be sunny. Right now, there's still a little bit of May gray. It's 63 degrees in Northridge when ex with an expected high of 70. Tonight's low will be 56. Tomorrow will be cool and cloudy, cloudy, but don't expect the trend to continue throughout the week. A high of 78 is expected on Friday. It will be 77 degrees this Saturday. Thanks for watching Matador News. I'm Janella Giglito. I'm Tiffany Martinez. I'm Emily Sasueta. And I'm Max Gowen.